Hi, Chem students, and welcome to a tutorial over matter and change. Please have out your notes and something to write with. Okay, so what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So I've got matter and non-matter. We need to know the difference. So let's think about this. Juice. Does it have mass and take up space? Yes, I think it does. So I'm going to put it in the matter vortex. Okay, what about heat? I don't think heat has mass, and I don't think it takes up space. We just feel it. So this is non-matter. It's an example of a type of energy. That's what non-matter is, energy. Ice, it takes up space and has mass. Radiation is just energy. A rock takes up space and has mass. So does air. But x-rays and light are both non-matter. And lastly, I've got salt here. It takes up space and has a mass. So make sure that you wrote down a couple examples of each type. Okay, we have three different states of matter, and we're going to discover their properties. We've got solids, liquids, and gases. So first, I want to talk about the structure of their particles. In solids, they're tightly compact, meaning closely smushed together. In liquids, they're going to be less compact, and gases are loose and spread out. Next, compressibility. What do I mean by compressibility? Well, if something is compressible, it's going to be like this picture on the left side. This first picture shows something just spread out. And in the second portion, you can see it's being compressed, meaning it's being moved into a smaller amount of space. So, out of our three different types, Solids and liquids are not compressible. Only gases are. Gases can be compressed and pushed closer together. Okay, motion of particles. Solids vibrate in place. Liquids have a medium pace. And gases are fast and have a random movement. Shape. Solids have a definite shape. It has its own constant shape. This can't be changed. Liquids have an indefinite shape. What I mean by that is it's going to take the shape of its container. Gases will take the shape of its container as well. Now, for volume, solids have a definite volume, meaning that its volume is able to be measured. Liquids have a definite volume also. It can be measured. But gases have an indefinite volume. They spread out to fill its container. Okay, so here's a good depiction of what the motion of the particles of each type of matter look like. So solids, and in this example it's ice, the motion of the particles um, are jiggling in place, or vibrating next to each other. Liquid water, if we zoom in, we see that the molecules in the liquid are flowing around. They have a medium kind of movement. And then lastly, water vapor being a gas. We can see that the molecules and the gas are spaced far apart. They're random and they're fast moving. Okay, in this unit, like the last one, there's a couple of vocabulary words we need you to be comfortable with. Viscosity is one of them. So viscosity is a term related to fluids, only liquids and gases, so not solids. Viscosity is defined as resistance to flow. So I have two examples of highly viscous liquids, honey and lava. They're very slow moving and resistant to flow. Okay, so classification of matter. I need you to be able to classify matter and to know the different types. We have two different types that we're going to talk a lot about in chemistry. We've got pure substances and mixtures. Let's talk first about pure substances. Pure substances have what we call a definite composition, meaning one chemical formula. Okay, so things like elements and compounds. Elements are one type of atom that you find on the periodic table. For example, iron or chlorine. So iron would look like this. It's just one type of atom. But chlorine also is one type of atom, but it's special in the fact that it's diatomic. And diatomic sounds exactly how it is. Di meaning two, atomic meaning atom. 
So it's two atoms stuck together. There's seven of these special atoms, and we'll talk more about them as the course proceeds, but chlorine's one of them. So you can see in our picture, it's two of the same color stuck together. It's still defined as just an element. Okay, next in our pure substances, we have compounds. There are two or more elements that are chemically bonded to each other. So for example, H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen, as you can see here in our picture. Um, the darker shaded atom being the oxygen, the two lighter ones being hydrogen. Okay, so those are our pure substances. We also have mixtures, which are two or more pure substances that are physically combined. They can be separated physically, and they have an indefinite composition, meaning that their composition may vary by proportion. There's two types. There's homogeneous and heterogeneous. So, homogeneous also are known as solutions meaning they look uniform or the same throughout. Our examples are things like Gatorade, salt water, and different alloys. Salt water, they commonly call saline solution, hence solution being the same as homogeneous. If you look at the picture on a molecular level, you can see here we have a water molecule, and here we have some other stuff. So this is a physical mixture, two different things combined. Okay, heterogeneous. They're not uniform, and you can see the different particles. My picture here shows a mixture of oil and water. You can see how they're separating. That is special for heterogeneous mixtures. Okay, I have a video that I want to play for you. I think it helps to make this a little bit more clear. So let's watch it. substances. Some are pure, but the large majority are formed by mixtures of two or more pure substances. Pure substances have a homogeneous appearance. Each pure substance is characterized by having specific properties that distinguish them from all other substances. In contrast, mixtures do not have specific properties. Their properties depend on the substances, or components, that form them. The components in a mixture can be extracted using appropriate separation methods. Depending on their appearance, mixtures can be heterogeneous, or homogeneous, the components in a heterogeneous mixture can be distinguished with the naked eye, and are not even distributed. The components in some of these heterogeneous mixtures can only be distinguished using a light microscope. This is the case of colloids. The components in a homogeneous mixture, or solution, are evenly distributed so they cannot be distinguished, not even under a light microscope. I hope you found the video to be helpful. Um, to complete our lesson for today, I want to compare and contrast elements, compounds, and mixtures. Let's just go through a couple of examples together. Okay, so sodium chloride, NaCl, this isn't going to be an element because I've got two different atoms in this. It's a compound, two different atoms that are bonded together. Okay, pure water. Let's think of what pure water is. It's H2O, so this is going to be a compound as well. When I talk about something like copper, that's just an element. You can find it on the periodic table all by itself. Same with silver. Things like mixtures are going to be things like air. It's a whole bunch of different 
elements or compounds are physically mixed together. Um, carbon would be just an element. Rocky road, this is definitely a heterogeneous mixture. You can see the different pieces in the rocky road. You can see the chocolate ice cream and the marshmallows, etc. Um, carbon dioxide, it's CO2, it's carbon, and then oxygen, so it's two different elements bound to each other. Lemonade is going to be a mixture. It's going to be homogenous. You can't see the different particles in lemonade, but it's water and then sugar and then lemon flavoring. It's different stuff mixed together, but it looks like one thing. Okay, let's look at our next example. In this example, we are comparing and contrasting heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures. Remember, heterogeneous being where you can see the difference, and homogeneous where it looks like one thing. So salad dressing, like Italian salad dressing, is going to be heterogeneous. Salad, I can see the different pieces. Iced tea, I can't. It looks like one thing, so it's homogeneous. Homo, meaning one. Air. It looks like one thing. It's just a clear gas, but it's made up of a bunch of stuff. Brass, it's an alloy. So it looks like one thing, but it's two different metals that are melted together. Raisin bran, you can see the different pieces, so it's heterogeneous. Soil, I can see the different parts in the soil. And lastly, we've got salt water, which is homogeneous because it looks like one thing. You can't see that there's salt dissolved in the water. Okay, this completes our lesson for today. I hope you found it to be helpful. Please rewind and pause parts if you need to watch it again and to take better notes. Please feel free to ask your teacher questions in class for more help. Have a great day.